Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, thank you again for joining me. So today I'm going to talk about um, an individual by the name of Saif al Azam. Uh, he was a Bengali uh, fighter pilot that actually downed four Israeli jets, believe it or not. Um, and this was during the the war, uh, the Six Day War in 1967. Um, so actually, I was I recently joined Twitter and X, um, and obviously I'm trying to raise awareness about Islamic ancestry and the Shah Jalal Al Yemeni series. Um, and uh, obviously, I'm looking at the the Twitter feed and I'm seeing some a lot of tragic scenes from Gaza, unfortunately. Um, and I'm also seeing um, Muslims in India being oppressed. So I decided to just drop a comment um, <laughs> on one of these posts and I'll drop it here. You can see what I said is here. Um, so, yeah, so in the past, a, delega a delegation from Delhi arrived in Silet, Bangladesh, to liberate its people from oppression. It seems like Bangladesh needs to pre prepare to return the favor soon. That's what I said. Um, and I basically received a bunch of uh, hate comments thereafter from some Indian nationalist fanatics um, so then I just ignored most of it but there was one that actually caught my attention um, this guy a math book player so he said Bangladesh isn't going to do anything other than welcoming them in their country you guys simply do not have the military requirements okay I mean if he probably means the uh, capabilities anyway so I thought that's a fair comment um, but I think one thing he doesn't realize is um, you know Allah says in the Quran how many a small company has overcome a large company by the permission of Allah and Allah is with the patient um, in Al-Baqarah 249 so in the past you know there's been smaller military groups that have overcome, overcome larger ones uh, by the permission of Allah and that's, this is easy for Allah it's nothing hard so yeah Bangladesh can overcome India if needed uh, I don't I'm not promoting war obviously um, I'd rather do things peacefully it's always good to do things in a peaceful way but the way India is heading and these people it just looks like the outlook doesn't look great it looks like at some point you know there's going to have to be an intervention the same way that we need to intervene in in Gaza um, so anyway uh, just a quick um, a quick on his hi in terms of his story Saif al-Azam rahimahullah uh, he's passed away um, so yeah in the in 1967 there was a six day war uh, between the Arab countries and uh, Israel um and Saif al Azam was actually um he was he was fight he was fighting for the Pakistan Pakistani Air Force at the time. Obviously back back then it was uh, East Pakistan, West Pakistan. So he was fighting for the Pakistani army, the Air Force. And uh he was uh, he was asked to go and train I think people in Jordan, the fighters there, the, the pilots. Um and then it happened to be the time where this war kicked off. So he was he happened just to be there in Jordan, uh, in nineteen sixty seven. Um and yeah the war kicked off and obviously the he, he was quite well known that he was a very good pilot fighter pilot so he was asked to participate and of course he being a muslim he, he participated happily so he jumped in a plane but he wouldn't you would be shocked he jumped in like an old world war ii kind of relic plane it was a british hawker hunter so it's quite an old plane i'll try and drop a picture on the screen um and he was going up against like these uh, french made israeli hypersonic jets which is just it's, it's a bit crazy so anyway he he managed to down four of them believe it or not and that's just it's a it's an amazing record um if you look if you do some research online you'll see um it's not an easy thing to do <laughs> to down four jets in uh, and he done it in two days so well he done it in two days so he downed he downed two in jordan and then uh i think the iraqis asked him to go and help him help defend the airbase there so he he was taken to iraq and then when he got there he downed another two so yeah so well it's a bit of a record um, and yeah, he was given multiple awards um, by like Jordan, Iraq, Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh when it became Bangladesh, and even the U.S. who who recognized him as one of living, uh, one of 22 living eagles, uh, which is yeah, it's a nice title. Um, yeah, of course he became a hero in Palestine after that, um, and his name was quite well known and widespread. Um, and when he passed away, Rahimullah, uh, in 2020, um, you know people honored him in Palestine. Uh, there's one such quote from uh, Osama al-Ashqar, uh, a Palestinian historian. He said, our brothers in Bangladesh and Pakistan were our brothers in resistance and defending the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the holy site in Jerusalem. So yeah, he was definitely honoured um, and Allah honoured him in this life and inshallah in the next. Um, so yeah, we can take a few lessons from this story. The first being that victory is not determined entirely by one's military might 
um, actually, you know, skill, experience, uh, determination and strategy play a big part in this. And ultimately, it's the will of Allah. If Allah wills a small army to overcome a big army, then it's easy for Allah. It's not a problem. Um, so, yeah, going back to that comment I received, yeah, just to remind you, you know, it's not about your military power. It's more, there's a lot more to it. Um, and ultimately it's the will of Allah so if Allah decides for a smaller army to overcome uh, a bigger army it's easy for Allah, it can happen uh, and obviously another disclaimer, I'm not encouraging war I'm just saying this is possible for Allah anything is easy for Allah uh, the second lesson we can take is yeah, when we, we when we unite we become a lot more capable so even though the Arabs lost that particular war um, if imagine they were disunited at that time like individual countries, they would be even would be in, a, in, in an even worse state most likely at least they managed to unite and they saw a small victory at the time uh, at the hands of Saif al-Azm and a few others that participated um, so then the third uh, lesson we can take um, I think this is an important one related to Islamic ancestry is when we recall when we recall history historical events uh, especially those that are relevant to specific Muslim ethnic groups um, by that I mean like you know, Muslims are of different varieties. We are of different cultures and tribes and nations, as Allah says in the Quran. Um, so, like, you know, when you remind Bengalis of like specific heroes from coming from their culture and their background, or English people, English Muslims, or um, I don't know, Spanish Muslims, or any type of Muslim, Pakistani Muslims, uh, when you remind them of their specific heroes, it's it's a bit closer to home. So they can relate to it more. I would feel, um, and this could be used to like inspire them to inspire specific communities um, maybe in their own language as well that's another thing um, and I think it's important to hand down these stories to the next generation um, to inspire them and to preserve these stories as well so that's quite an important lesson and the, I guess the final lesson is the <coughs> the issue of Palestine and Al-Aqsa it, ha- it really does have the ability to wake up the whole Ummah and probably the whole world and unite um, the Ummah specifically on this issue um, and I think people are all across the world people are ready like they're ready to um, do whatever they can to to stop this genocide and uh, and participate in any means any means possible to be honest um obviously legal i'm not saying i'm not uh, i'm not advocating illegal activities i'm just saying like we need to do what we can as much as we can exert our efforts um and yeah just the fun fact um that i came across that i'm uh, obviously using data so israel has actually uh, in its arsenal 241 fighter jets so if the Muslim Ummah could produce just four fighter pilots of the same caliber as Saif al-Azm, it would literally take them 30 days to destroy Israel's entire fleet at the rate of two, if they were to destroy two like jets per day. So literally the Ummah just, just produced four like fighter jet pilots of this caliber and in 30 days they're done, like their, their, their whole fleet of, of jets will be finished. Uh, obviously it's not as easy as that, it's not as simple as that, there would be other countries involved and whatnot. I'm just giving you a, a fun fact, right? Okay, um, so anyway, just to finish off, um, we don't have in our pipeline a, a film or um, on Saif al-Azm, but I think it's something that we would do a bit later on, inshallah. Um, so it would be from his birth in the 1940s up until his death in 2020, so he would cover quite a wide period it would be quite interesting to do that actually and it's it would be it would be an important contribution to the uh, islamic library um that we're trying to um, produce so yeah just to summarize and wrap up uh, may allah have mercy on on this legend uh, saif al-azam rahimahullah uh, may his story inspire many more eagles of this ummah uh, from the bengal and indo pak region and and everywhere else um uh, and yeah so i would like to leave it there uh, assalamu alaikum warahmatullah